Attempting to deathmatch, and this is what can happen. Be on the lookout for these majors who will instantly teleblock you, entangle you, and then do an eight-way switch to try to kill you. You know, luckily I didn't die there, but I very well could have. So be on the lookout. All right, what is going on, you guys? It is Mr. No Sleep here from Old School RuneScape, and welcome to a new video for you all today. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to try out deathmatching for the first ever time. Now, I'll start by saying I certainly do not condone this. I myself have always been a fan of gambling, whether it's going to the casino and just sitting at the slots all day, or simply staking in RuneScape back when staking was a thing. But when it got removed from the duel arena and they changed the maximum stake to like 10 mil, uh, this is when deathmatching became very popular. Now what you're seeing on screen is basically deathmatching. You essentially can use any weapon, any setup, and as long as you don't eat any food or teleport, then you're good to go. That's basically it. Now in this video start to finish, this is basically basically my experience throughout the last day of deathmatching. I recorded every single kill I got and every single time I died and it's all in order. So we'll see if I'm able to make a profit by the end of the video. Personally, I think everyone looks at gambling a little bit differently. I really just kind of like to set a limit of how much I'm willing to lose. And if I hit that limit, I will be walking. So in other words, if I ever go down 100 mil, I am 100% out of there. And I never really look at gambling as a smart way to make money. I follow so many YouTube YouTube channels that uh, are a bunch of high rollers in Las Vegas and they always say if you go into the casino looking to make money that is when you're going to lose everything because you're always going to be confident to keep going back because you're going to make back what you lost. However if you set a limit and you're okay with walking even after losing maybe you're on a loss streak uh, as long as you can take that and just walk away and not go back you'll be good and me personally if I was able to lose a hundred mil doing this I would have walked but luckily for me that didn't really ever happen happen. I was on a pretty even streak. I would go on with a few kills in a row and then I would die a few times in a row, but I never went, uh, you know, like 10 losses in a row or 10 wins in a row. Nothing really crazy happened throughout this day. It was really just back and forth with different people, different setups. Um, I encountered a few scammers. I encountered a few uh, just in incredible fights where I would win with full HP and then the complete opposite would happen. I won't lie to you guys. It was a lot of fun doing this and it was a really nice break from PVMing and killing all sorts of strange monsters, but I also know my limits and I know how compulsive I can get over certain things, so this will be my one and only deathmatching video. And being brand new to the deathmatching scene, I was unaware that there's a plugin called DM Watch that apparently you, you almost have to have unless you're obviously like a streamer or a YouTuber and people just trust you. Not saying you should trust them unless they're live, of course, but I myself was just doing this as a video and people know me well enough to know I'm not going to scam, obviously. So I didn't really use this plugin until the very end of the video, but essentially if you uh, want to be 100% confident the person you're going to be fighting is not going to scam you, then you have this plugin enabled, and I guess somehow you can see their inventory, you can see what they're wearing. I actually had the plugin DM Watch enabled at the end of the video, and I still to this day have no idea how to use it. Um, you know, all it really does is it labels players who are known scammers, and they have uh, a red name above their uh, character, and I guess that way you don't uh, fight them because they're a known scammer and actually active in your chat box it will tell you what they scammed and who they scam so way over my head but again this plugin was unfamiliar to me I was very confused when people kept asking me to challenge them with it and even after adding it at the end of the video I, I still was unable to challenge anyone so I was just going based off the fact that people trust me and obviously I'm not going to scam I mean these are 18 mils and I think the biggest uh, risk I did in this uh, video was 63 mil unfortunately I lost that one but yeah I mean keep that in mind that plugin is apparently very very important for this. Um, I wasn't associating myself with a clan chat or anything like that. I wasn't live streaming this on Twitch or promoting it. I was really just kind of trying to stay as low key as I could and just explore this and make it into a YouTube video for you guys. And again, I'm not one to promote gambling, but if you want to put your bank on the line and try to make some money, then this is, I guess, a way to do it um, outside of well, I, I pretty much, I guess this is it, yeah. Certainly wouldn't go to a third-party website or anything like that, because you never know how legitimate those are, and of course you could get banned, you know, maybe if you trade someone your money and you want to buy poker chips or something, maybe they're going to sell that money. You, you might be associated with that, and you might catch a ban, so you got to be very careful these days, and uh, yeah, I mean, this is the new staking of RuneScape. Um, definitely I made a few staking videos in my day, probably about four years ago. I was, uh, I think, 10 bill bank at that time, and it only lasted a week, but it was a fun week, you know, and ever since then, when they removed the duel arena, kind of just gave up, kind of just lost all interest in, uh, 
uh, staking and I was never a high risk PKer. So yeah, I just kind of went back to PVMing and built my bank the right way. It's certainly amazing to see the, the risk that people actually do in these high risk worlds. I mean, there's people with inquisitor sets and void wakers as well as primordials and tortures. So, I mean, that's just like right there, 500 mil, 400 mil that they're willing to risk. And the fight lasts less than three seconds. I mean, it's just insane. The amount of money that fluctuates through this world in an hourly basis and the amount of DH sets that are purchased and armor the God swords and amulet of tortures. I mean, this is a flipper's dream, you know, to just buy low and sell high when people are just rushing to purchase these items to get back into death matching. So this probably makes merchanters and flippers a lot of money uh, when they focus on these items. I would say after a day of doing this, which was pretty much all day yesterday, probably about four hours of just constant fighting. And then I would just be watching people for a few hours as well, as creepy as that may sound. It was interesting to see the amount of money people were losing. And sometimes I'd see the same person die time and time again. And yeah, honestly, you feel kind of bad for these guys, you know, it's pretty good odds. I mean, everyone's got the same stats and the same bonuses, same weapons, but some people just get unlucky. Well, luckily for me, I didn't have to go through that. And my limit, of course, was 100 mil. So if I lost up to that, I would be walking away. And as I mentioned before, fortunately, that didn't happen. So yeah, what a fun experience. I uh, really did enjoy this one. Not going to go back ever again, because I work way too hard for my bank. And a lot of people always ask me, Mr. No Sleep, where's all your GP? Well, if you look at my channel and you actually see the monsters and videos that I make, a lot of them don't really net me a lot of profit. This combined with the price of bonds being 8 mil and me using 4 accounts with membership and using 16 mil per account per month in order to access membership worlds, uh, yeah, it definitely takes a toll. And not to mention I've done some videos which I've lost a ton of money in. So I don't see deathmatching as a way to make back that money or to make my bank look uh, a lot nicer than it currently is. Is, I am in it for the long haul and again I'm not ever gonna quit so I'll probably eventually get to where I want to be again financially but for now I have a few bills in the bank and I'll probably do a bank video sometime next year on my main account and probably do a bank video on my other three accounts uh, within the next month or two because some people have been asking for that either way though let me know what you guys think in the comment section below of gambling and runescape whether it was the staking days or death matching or even the dicing era where people were using dice bags and planting flowers and all that. Were you guys involved in any of that? Did you enjoy it? Do you think it hurt the game? Do you think it was just too much? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section below. What did your What was your favorite uh, way of gambling for you personally? Or are you just someone who would never do it under any circumstance? I'm very curious. I would say out of all the fights I did, I definitely enjoyed the no armor fights with an Elder Maul. Most of those clips are at the end or the same goes for having no armor and an Armadale Godsword. Those were such quick fights and instead of using DH where the fight would last sometimes close to a minute and it would just be so annoying because the opponent would have full HP and they would kill me with no problem at all. I definitely found the no armor to be much more exciting than having a DH set. So that's just me personally though. As you can see, that is the plugin that's in the chat box right there. You can see a nearby player is a scammer and then of course it lists what they scammed and the victim of the scam. So yeah, real high tech. I'm impressed by that. Again, I don't know enough about the plugin to talk more about it but that seems to be uh, one of the functions of it. Now, as it goes for the scammers uh, that I encountered, most of them just teleported away. I think it was a total of four people who scammed me in this video. Th I think three of them teleported away and one guy ate during the fight. So I just teleported away. I actually laughed out loud when that happened. I really don't care much about scammers. I've been scammed so many times in this game throughout the last 20 years that, you know, whatever, people are going to do it no matter what. So uh, yeah, I mean, luckily they didn't get the kill. And um, yeah, I mean, that's about it. I think other than that, there was one fight that the guy didn't bring a brimstone ring, but I think that gave me odds, so I'll take it. But in general, yeah, what a great experience. Uh, one and done here, you know, can't go back. I don't want to get addicted to any of this, and again, I don't think I would. I just, I don't have that much money to keep doing something like this, and if you go on a, just a small little losing streak, it adds up so quick that it gets hard to make it back, and it's just not worth all that uh, stress and all that effort. That death right there cost me 60 mil, but the guy was so nice that he gave me 20 mil back. You know, I'll certainly take it. He was uh, he was happy that I was baking it into a video, so free 20 mil. And here we have the last few fights of the video for today, and these were my personal favorite. I uh, wish I would have done all of these fights in this video from the start, just like this, you know, no armor and Elder Maul Risk with Dragon Boots and Fury and Brimstone Ring. This was just a lot more enjoyable for me personally. I, I really despise DHing after this one, so yeah, this was a lot of fun, and me and this guy were going back and forth, and I wanted to make sure that my last fight with him would be a, you know, well worth 
the risk and that way I could walk at that point. So instead of the dragon boots and the amulet of fury, I asked him to get primordial boots and an amulet of torture with the same exact setup. This alongside clicking on his character's head the whole entire fight granted me the win. Sorry for the spoiler. And yeah, that was when I decided to stop because I looked at how much uh, I had made and how much I didn't lose and I was happy with that. You know, I went from probably being up about 100 mil at one point in this video to being down 80 mil. So I again, a lot of back and forth. I probably should have walked when I was at 100 mil, but overall, looking at all of the loot chests, I killed 31 people and I died 21 times, resulting in 40 mil profit. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. This will be the only one that you'll see involved with deathmatching. As you can see, I've been up to uh, some side projects there, but uh, you'll see more about this account in the future. Uh, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time today. A huge thank you to the YouTube channel members with a special shout out to Matthew Stivers, Angel's Blood, Deception Z, and XXZoticXOSRS. Till next time, Mr. No Sleep, out.